little Aquarius. I'm going to attempt to guide you through the um, interesting, very, very interesting, very Aquarian month of February 2016. This should work if you're Aquarian sun sign or Aquarian ascending sign. And anyway, so let's take a look at this month. Boy, uh, I would characterize the first half of February for everybody that the mood would be both manic and dreamy. This is going to affect your first house of identity, personality, body, appearance, self-image, you know, all this kind of you stuff, okay? Um, the second half of February, we're now moving into your second house, survival instincts, materials, tools, resources, because you've had your birthday. The pre-birthday phase is always a little freaky. Um, but um, I'm sure you'll make it through. But anyway, by, by the time we get to the second half of February, uh, we're moving more towards that second house. So pay attention to subtle clues, train your ESP, especially regarding your survival instincts, materials, and tools. So here's um, the map, as it were. Not the map, but the program for February. We have February 6th through 10th, the new moon. Everybody's waking up to Chinese New Year. We'll talk about that in a second. And then uh, February 20th through 24th is the full moon. It's kind of a dreamy manic phase. And then February 25th through March 2nd, Sun conjunct Neptune, interesting stories. Yeah. So, okay, here's my report. I'm like a reporter. You're the fire monkey. Um, I didn't know much about it. So I asked my colleague, Pung Yin, who is an expert on Chinese astrology, and she described the fire monkey as a rocky, jumpy ride. She said jumpy more than rocky. Um, she further advised that large crowds could cause nervous overload. Interesting concept, uh, especially for sensitive types. So she advised to focus on building strong bonds in a more intimate sense, in a closer setting, in a smaller groups. Boost your immune system, retreat into the tranquility and beauty of natural settings. In addition, uh, you are advised to curb needless social activity and avoid brushing in general, avoid technical pollutions like microwaves, and avoid disturbances. Good advice. And uh, check out um, Feng Shui Master Pung Yin at pungyin.com for more information about um, Chinese astrology and Feng Shui. Okay, back to our regular astrology, which is that in this case we have an overlap of this um, in the zodiac between the tail, of the sea goat, right here you can see, and the shoulder of Aquarius, and that's exactly where the new moon is happening. Um, this is going to, as I said, emphasize your identity, personality, body, and appearance, self-image, and direction. So it's kind of makeover time, you know. And if you haven't had your birthday, it's a little more tricky. Because after the birthday is beginning of the year and it's when people feel the best, typically the pre-birthday can be, you might need extra sleep. But uh, for the most part, we're just going to count that this is in your first house. Most Aquarians have had their birthday by this point, or many have had. And um, the um, let's see, what would help you with your identity in terms of the tail of the sea goat? Um, well, a, to be a bringer of luck, I think Aquarians really like the idea of helping other people and bringing luck to other people. And, and I think that uh, sociological studies or psychological studies have found that these kinds of people are the happiest people. They're thought to be really valuable by, by their peers. So if you know an opportunity or something that would interest or help someone, then uh, follow your natural inclination and go ahead and do that. And I think that would really fit for you. So the other thing would be that um, to it, 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 an ability to make things flow, which is kind of continuing that, that former thought of helping things along for people or just helping things move along and be the person that is encouraging progress. Um, that would fit very well with Sa'ad al-Sud, the star called luckiest of the lucky. So the full moon is going to be in your eighth house, and this will emphasize collaborations, contracts, and troubleshooting. This also has an element of luck because the full moon is fairly close, within 17 degrees of the planet Jupiter. Meanwhile, the sun is uh, moving through your second house at, at this point, and it's conjunct Neptune. That would be February 20th through 24th, and that full moon, uh, or coming close to the full moon, and so um, this means your survival instincts could be become very, very complex because the planet Neptune kind of makes everything a little bit more elaborate. It could be glamorous and sensitive, spiritual and mystical, but then also issues of 
illusions, trickery, tax, and chaos. So you want to guard your valuables and double check um, your important accounts and make sure everything is paid properly and that you're not overspending, save your receipts, all that sort of thing. I think this could be very good for people in the field of aesthetics, that is uh, anyone in the arts or um, anyone who is dealing with the element of beauty uh, because this could inspire um, you know, great sensitivity and vision. Okay, so that's a positive aspect of Neptune. Uh, meanwhile, um, just to continue with our uh, full moon, as the full moon though, it's in Tropical Virgo, it's in the, um, it's, it's near the heart of the lion and the back of the lion, and it's also near the constellation called Sextans, which is the compass. So um, we're gonna be looking at these stars to see if this can give you more information about collaborations and contracts and because of your eighth house. All right, um, definitely justice motives are very, very encouraging in terms of collaboration because everyone wants to collaborate with someone who's honest and, um, and who is um, you know, noble, courageous, and frank. These would be strong points. Um, also the idea of imposing order in storms and chaos, which is one quality of the Compass constellation, I think is very, very confidence building regarding collaborations. Um, and being observant, definitely, and having this sense of primal forces of the bay. You know, and that's kind of what feng shui is involved with these the forces of the Tao, of magnetism, of directions, of the elements. These can all help you. So this, uh, this period of February 20th, with the uh, starting the full moon all the way through March 2nd, the, um, the end part of Sun Conjunct Neptune, I'm calling this, and this is a big <laughs> declaration maybe, the most mystical and potentially confusing time of the year. And that empathy and compassion will work wonders, but beware the fakers out there. So in this case, the full moon is emphasizing collaborations, contracts, troubleshooting, so bringing on teamwork, uh, revelations, that's all great. But Neptune in your second house, there could be some confusions about resources, that could, there could be things interfering with your instincts. So, um, you know, I, I think this is a positive, uh, Neptune's a positive in terms of aesthetics. We've already talked about that. But in terms of keeping your instincts clear, I would um, avoid uh, toxins, which would include alcohol, because, um, and I think this is near, I think this is kind of um, in, in that time frame where pretty often the winter doldrums and people are just um, don't know what to do with themselves as so they go out and party. Um, not a good idea during this time period because it's already so laden with uh, so much stuff. You know, you want to be paying attention to your dreams and not letting things interfere with your instincts. End of, uh, end of temperance commercial there. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so let's summarize the, what I've talked about is that the new moon, February 6th through 10th, is, is the waking up process with that vibrant Chinese New Year. Um, February 20th through 24th, a little dreamy and manic with the full moon. February 20th through March 2nd, interesting stories, some conjunct Neptune. That's the thing we just talked about. Now, I just can't resist a little bit of sneak preview about March. And I'm um, going right from some conjunct Neptune into the time window, the solar eclipse. Solar eclipse March 8th, but the time window is going to be March 4th through 10th. During that time period, we're all going to experience these global opinion shifts. Nobody knows what to believe, religion, patronage healing. These are all, you know, in the state of flux and for you could affect your survival instincts, materials, tools, and resources. So you're kind of thinking, you know, in terms of where, you know, what do you want to, you know, build in for your survival, what kind of materials and tools you want to accomplish, uh, I mean, accumulate that you're not really sure. But after the uh, March 10th, you should feel a little more settled. Uh, and then the second half of March is dominated by the lunar eclipse. The sun is moving into your third house at this point. So your emphasis on meetings, visiting, and hosting. Meanwhile, the lunar eclipse will be in your ninth house. So um, you're trying to think what really fits for you regarding your education, your religion, travel, your global um, presence, if you have any. So the advice for that lunar eclipse, and we're looking way ahead here to um, third week of March, but be ready for anything, keep the faith, use science and troubleshoot. That'll help you with that lunar eclipse. So anyway, that's February and a little bit about March. Thank you very much for watching. Have a most excellent month and um, wishing you the best.
akşam seminerimizi canlı olarak mobil uygulamamız üzerinden yapıyoruz.